Welcome to FarmCraft. In this video I'm going to discuss the three main types of solar systems that are available. Understanding solar power systems can be very complicated. I found all this confusing too when I first started learning about it, and I hope I can now explain it well enough that it will make it easier on somebody else. There are three basic types of systems. There is a grid tied system, there is an off-grid system, and there is a hybrid system which has components of both. A lot of confusion arises from the fact that both hybrid and grid-tied systems have connections to the grid, but they are very different in their basic function and setup. Let's start with the grid-tie system. This system is designed to produce power with your solar panels, invert it in sync with the grid, and put that power back into the grid where it can either be used by you in your house or sent back into the grid for someone else to use. Grid-tie inverters are designed to shut down if the grid goes down. A system with a battery backup that is also connected to the grid is not a grid tie system, it is a hybrid system which we'll cover later. An off-grid system is exactly that. There's no tie to the grid and it generates all the power for the house. Note here that the inverter must be large enough to power everything that the house is going to require. Many off-grid systems also have a generator to top off the batteries as needed and to run additional items that the inverter is not capable of running. Also note that the inverter does not need any syncing technology, meaning it can generate its own sine wave however it likes. It doesn't have to match it to the grid or anything else. This means a strictly off-grid inverter can be somewhat cheaper than the comparably sized hybrid inverter. Already you can see a major difference between the two systems. In the off-grid system, you are limited by the size of your inverter as to what you can run. In the grid tie system, you still have the grid, so you can run anything you want. Your inverter just needs to be sized so that it's large enough to invert all the power that your panels are able to produce. And now we come to the hybrid system. Like the grid tie system, it is attached to the grid. And like the off-grid system, it has a battery bank. These inverters are capable of syncing their power output to match the grid, uh, and they are also capable of going down to the voltage of your battery bank. And that means these are the most expensive, the largest, and most complex inverters out there. Let's go through its basic function. This is just like the off-grid inverter at this point. The solar panels produce direct current that is sent to a charge controller. The charge controller has two jobs. It matches the voltage of the incoming direct current to the voltage of the battery bank. And then it monitors that battery bank and sends electricity to charge the batteries as needed. Once the batteries are full, the charge controller basically stops the flow of power from the panels to protect the batteries from overcharging. The inverter pulls its power directly from the batteries. If the batteries are full, when the inverter is drawing power, it will drop the voltage. The charge controller will sense that voltage drop and send more power to the battery bank. Rather than just stopping the flow of power like it would in an off-grid system, excess power is sent back to the grid. But it's a little more complicated than this simplistic diagram shows. In this diagram, the inverter is powering the whole house, and that would require an inverter capable of running everything that you need to run in your house. The inverter would have to be huge to run your heat pumps, your hot water heater, your stove, your refrigerators, everything all at once. Most hybrid systems are set up with a critical loads panel, and that complicates the installation quite a bit What's a critical load panel? Well, that's a panel where you put everything that you need to run no matter what, whether you're on grid power or battery backup power. These would be things like your refrigerator, essential lights, maybe your microwave, definitely your computer so you can get on YouTube when the power's out. The rest of the loads in your house would be wired in a second panel. These would be things that your inverter's not able to run, like your heat pump, your hot water heater, or things that aren't essential, like the electricity in your mother-in-law's bedroom. This panel only receives power when the grid is up. Uh, it just basically passes through the inverter. The big advantage to this hybrid inverter is it will always provide power to the critical load panel. If the grid is up, it will use the grid power and supply the panel. If the grid goes down, it will automatically change over to the battery bank and provide power to the, to the load panel. Once the batteries are dead, then you'll lose power to the load panel, unless you have a generator, which isn't shown in the diagram, but is also an option in these type of systems. So now you can see the additional challenges that a hybrid system presents. The grid tie system uh, just needs to tie into the grid somewhere. It doesn't matter where it is. You can run a wire from any panel or sub-panel in your system as long as it's got the carrying capacity of the grid tie inverter. 
uh, that that's all you need. You're all set up and ready to go. The hybrid inverter needs to be in proximity to the critical load panel, which if you don't already have all your circuits wired into a panel, that all that wiring is going to have to be done to install the system. So the hybrid system requires a more expensive inverter. Uh, it requires a battery bank and it requires a charge controller or possibly several charge controllers. The battery bank is crucial for the hybrid system to be able to produce power when the grid is down. The battery bank acts as a buffer, providing a store of electricity for the inverter to pull from when loads are suddenly turned on. In fact, in many systems, the inverter puts out more power than the panels are able to produce. In other words, if you turn on an appliance like your refrigerator and the compressor tries to start, it may draw several thousand watts while your panels are only producing one kilowatt of power. That additional power is only needed for a short time and is drawn from the battery bank. Over time, the panels are able to replenish that power, but without the battery bank, the inverter would have no way to get the power to start that compressor. In the grid tie system, the grid itself acts as this buffer. Now you can see why a grid tie system shuts down when the grid goes down. Even if you were to provide a cutoff between your system and the grid, the inverter still has no buffer to pull from in order to run loads. There is a grid tie inverter made by Sunny Boy that has one plug that is available when the sun is shining, but this plug is only a 15 amp, 120 volt plug. I've never known anyone to have one. I've been curious how they would perform on a semi-cloudy day. If anyone out there has one, leave a comment below. I, we'd all like to hear how it performs. Another issue that may not be so obvious with trying to run a grid tie inverter with the grid down is there's nowhere for excess power to go. If the sun's shining and the panels are producing kilowatts of power, but nothing is on at the house, where does that extra power go? With a hybrid system, the charge controller serves this function by stopping the flow of electricity between the panels and the batteries. So you can see that the systems with battery backups, the hybrid and the off-grid, both have the solar panels hooked directly to charge controllers. But I have a grid tie system and my panels are hooked directly to a grid tie inverter. So now the question becomes, how am I going to retrofit this with a battery backup? That will be the subject of my next solar video. Thanks for watching.